The Viper is a semi-automatic rapid-fire sniper rifle manufactured by Rosenkopf Materials. Rosenkopf developed a patented automatic release system that assists with thermal clip ejection, shortening the Viper's reload time. The rifle is popular with military snipers, who appreciate a long-range gun that can snap off multiple shots in the blink of an eye. The Valiant is a sniper rifle tested by Alliance soldiers during a series of harsh survival exercises on the planet Kuril Javan. This streamlined weapon employs a sophisticated fire control system that improves accuracy by stabilising the barrel during targeting. Although this comes at the cost of reduced capacity and rate of fire, most soldiers find that the increase in precision and quick reloading time are worthy trade-off. The Mantis is a powerful sniper rifle able to take out most targets in a single shot. It's incredibly accurate at long range, but rate of fire is slow. Manufactured by Devlon Industries, the Mantis is primarily used by police and planetary militia groups. The Indra's low-powered scope leaves it most effective at medium range, but many soldiers believe this limitation is offset by the gun's rapid rate of fire. The Indra is the first military-grade fully automatic sniper rifle. It has an extremely efficient heatsink system that allows a surprisingly large number of shots to be fired before the weapon ejects its thermal clip. The Incisor is a sniper rifle designed to overload active defences. Firing three shots with each pull of the trigger, the Incisor was initially advertised as having negligible recoil, although under real combat conditions, the second and third rounds frequently climb in difficulty. The noise of the burst is comparable to a single rifle shot in duration, making it no easier to locate the sniper by sound. The Chrysa sniper rifle is a Turian anti-material rifle modified to kill Reaper enemies. The Chrysa scope uses a rangefinder that adjusts to keep the target in proper proportion to the shooter, which comes in useful when the sniper is forced into close range. Its specialised ammunition is both armour-piercing and explosive. In a desperate move, the Turians released its specifications over the extranet so that nearly anyone with a fabricator could manufacture this weapon to help with the war effort. An Alliance captain on her fifth tour of the Terminus systems once said that seeing a Kishuk was the easiest way to tell if she was being attacked by Batarian mercenaries or slavers, since no bastard with a Kishuk means to take you alive. This powerful sniper rifle fires a harpoon-like spike that causes massive internal bleeding, and its miniaturised disruptors will also destroy synthetics. The rifle's biggest drawback is that it must be reloaded after every shot, but for those with steady aim and good timing, one shot is enough. The Raptor is a human version of a Turian weapon, developed for conflict on the low-gravity world Amar. Fighting at longer ranges than expected, the Turians optimised a low-recoil, semi-automatic rifle with a scope, and issued it to their regular infantry, creating a hybrid weapon that was half assault rifle and half sniper rifle. Cerberus assigns the Raptor to Nemesis fighters. The Alliance wanted to reduce the reload time of the original Widow rifle, without sacrificing its stopping power. The solution was to increase the number of shots the gun could fire before it needed a fresh thermal clip. Heavy for a sniper rifle, the Black Widow's firepower more than compensates for its encumbrance. Several research firms spent a considerable fortune trying to redesign the Widow sniper rifle. Their goal was to retain the Geth weapon's considerable firepower while reducing its recoil, so that the gun could be fired without breaking a non-synthetic's arm. After much trial and error, one company finally produced a usable model and rolled it out to the galactic market. The Avenger is a common, versatile, military-grade assault rifle manufactured by the Elkos Combine. It's accurate when fired in short bursts, and deadly when fired on full auto. The modular design and inexpensive components of the Avenger make it a favourite of military groups and mercenaries alike. The rifle has a reputation for being tough, reliable, easy to use and easy to upgrade. Named after a Turian spirit of creation, the face gun was engineered to provide the best possible balance between accuracy and firepower in a machine gun. Each shot is tempered by kickback dampeners inside the shoulder stock, which lets the face gun pack more punch than other weapons its size without sacrificing precision. Its fully automatic fire and relatively light weight has turned the face gun into the Turian infantry's primary go-to weapon. Medium range, semi-automatic rifle, the Matak is a hybrid weapon with an assault rifle's low heat production and a sniper rifle's punch. Marksman favourites increase power over that of an assault rifle to bring down hardened targets. Its lack of a full auto setting is advertised as a feature rather than a shortcoming, as it curbs a soldier's tendency to spray an accurate fire under stress. 
The Argus is a high-powered rifle favoured by senior CSEC officers. An excellent close-range weapon, its bursts of fire ensure ammunition conservation during lengthy conflicts. Other law enforcement agencies across the galaxy are adopting the Argus as their standard rifle, as much for its intimidation factor as its suppression power. The Vindicator is a battle rifle that fires in three round bursts, favoured by assassins and elite mercenaries and deadly at any range. Manufactured by the Elanus Risk Control Services for the Blue Suns Mercenary Group, the Vindicator is popular in the Terminus systems. After the carnage of the Battle of the Citadel, Alliance officers commissioned a new rifle for their ground forces. A variation of the popular Avenger design, the Valkyrie is now standard issue for new recruits. Exceptionally well crafted, accurate and packing ample firepower, the rifle is a hot black market item when it surfaces. The M76 Revenant unleashes a storm of deadly high-velocity slugs. It has low accuracy but a high thermal clip capacity and packs considerable firepower. This custom-made machine gun features technology not widely available. Protected against replication by sophisticated fabrication rights management technology, only the richest and most powerful warlords can afford the Revenant. The fancifully named Chakram Launcher uses an internal fabricator to manufacture lightweight aluminium discs wrapped in holographic tracers. These discs explode on impact, sending shrapnel tearing through the enemy. The markings stamped on the gun's barrel are a shipping code created by its manufacturer, Amalur Equipment. The code warns that the rifle must be assembled carefully, as it contains mixtures extremely volatile under pressure. This is why the Chakram Launcher requires thermal clips. Without a way to dissipate the intense heat created by its fabrication process, the rifle circuitry would quickly destroy itself in a spectacularly lethal meltdown. After the Reapers obliterated the Prothean Empire's warships, the Prothean resistance was forced to develop weapons that did not rely on intact supply lines. Prothean Particle Rifle is a stripped-down, powerful assault rifle, modified to fire without thermal clips or specialised ammunition. Alliance scientists agree that it appears to share some principles with the Collector's Particle Beam weapon, although the Prothean Particle Rifle requires a temporary cooldown period if it overheats. An amalgam of two different eras of technology, the Particle Rifle is still a deadly, efficient weapon. Named in memory of the quarians killed in the Morning War on the planet ADAS, the ADAS Anti-Synthetic Rifle's weapons electrical attack has been optimised for medium to long-range firefights. Alliance Marines take issue with calling it a rifle, since technically it has no rifling in its barrel. The Quarians shrug this off, as Quarian weapon terminology rarely translates flawlessly into human languages. These Cerberus modified Matic rifles are fully automatic. Cerberus gunsmiths reined in the recoil issues, resulting in a gun that stays on target, but delivers slightly less punch per round than a standard Matic. As such, the weapon is typically utilised by Cerberus's elite troops, who constantly train to make every burst count. The Typhoon is a distinctive light machine gun featuring a face shield to protect the shooter from headshots. Its power and recoil are so notorious that it includes a high-tech kinetic reducer to fight muzzle climb. Since the reducer tries to limit all motion by the weapon, marksmen do not engage it while moving, and instead reduce the recoil only while they are in cover. The Striker is a fully automatic weapon that functions more as a grenade launcher than a rifle, firing high-impact slugs that detonate on contact. The weapon increases its rate of fire the longer the trigger is held, which is devastating if the weapon can be kept on target. In an attempt to market the Striker outside of the Krogan DMZ, the gun was designed to be fired by non-Krogan, but its recoil tends to off-balance smaller species. Enthusiasts point out that the target on the receiving end of a striker has far worse things to worry about than its shooter's balance. The M7 Lancer is a rare collector's item that was introduced shortly after the First Contact War. The Lancer has been refurbished by an unknown master weaponsmith, and it now uses the higher velocity rounds of today's weaponry. It does not need heat sinks, instead utilising weapon heat generation from an earlier era. Few of these finely crafted weapons are in existence. Geth Pulse Rifles are comparable to a standard stock assault rifle, but finely balanced with low recoil and incredibly high accuracy. The Pulse Rifle fires a rapid stream of lightweight slugs, which are wrapped in a phasic envelope to increase their damage. A heavy-duty semi-automatic rifle favoured by only the most elite marksmen, the M99 Sabre is jokingly referred to as the Big Iron for its sheer stopping power. 
Each M99 Sabre is designed specifically for its owner, making it one of the Alliance's more expensive weapons. The Alliance Falcon Rifle launches 25mm mini grenades. Lighter and more accurate than most grenade launchers, the Falcon burns through specialised ammunition as well as standard thermal clips. A field fabrication kit generates this ammunition, leaving the clips as the rifle's only limitation. The Hornet is a long-range submachine gun created by Cerberus. It is standard equipment for Cerberus troops, who are trained to handle the recoil from the gun's three-round bursts. Cerberus designed the Hornet to conserve ammunition and provide cover fire during prolonged conflicts. As kinetic barriers have grown in popularity, so has the popularity of submachine guns. Manufactured by the Elcos Combine, the Shuriken machine pistol fires six round bursts with a high rate of fire. While some militaries pass on the Hurricane because of its lower accuracy, the Alliance feels the gun's rapid firing rate offers excellent suppressive fire. A disciplined marksman can use the fully automatic submachine gun to chew through targets with alarming speed. Alliance officers were so pleased with field results that the Hurricane is now many squadrons standard issue SMG. Produced by Alanus Risk Control Services for the Eclipse Mercenary Band, the Tempest is an expensive but deadly addition to anyone's personal arsenal. This fully automatic submachine gun is punishing up close, but becomes less accurate at long range. The Geth Plasma submachine gun works on the same principles as the Spitfire. It shoots superconducting toroids that break apart on impact, retaining an electrical charge that flash converts the shrapnel into plasma. Unlike the Spitfire, however, this smaller Geth weapon has been modified to take thermal clips. Holding down the trigger speeds up its rate of fire, rapidly depleting the gun's heatsink in exchange for nearly continuous fire. The Punisher features a secondary barrel that fires one armour-piercing round per main barrel burst. It was developed by Blood Pack gunsmiths, who found that their Vulture recruits frequently forgot to optimise ammo loads in the heat of combat. This configuration makes the process automatic and highly effective at penetrating armour. The Casa Fabrications Model 12 Locust is a compact submachine gun developed for the Alliance but now favoured by ganging forces and hitmen. Featuring a complex recoil reducing mechanism and high grade auto targeting software, the Locust delivers longer range, more accurate fire than others in its class. Manufactured by Ariake Technologies, the Katana is a common mercenary weapon and is also popular on colonies with Varan infestations. It's deadly at short range but ineffective at long range. Manufactured by Ariake Technologies, the Scimitar features twin mass effect generators, giving it a more rapid rate of fire than a traditional shotgun. This weapon was created for the Eclipse Mercenary Band, but is rapidly becoming popular with Blood Pack Mercs as well. Created by the Batarian military's notorious Special Intervention Unit, the Raider is a semi-automatic shotgun that loads slowly but fires rapidly, with tremendous force. Short range even for a shotgun, the Raider has a large pellet spread. Rather than eliminating recoil, its integral compensators instead make it predictable and vertical. The Graal is one of a long line of Krogan weapons used to hunt thresher moors. Its ammunition consists of oversized flechettes meant to pierce thresher hide and create deep wound channels leading to massive blood loss. For additional firepower the weapon is double barreled and, as a last resort, possesses blades to cause internal injuries if the wielder is swallowed by the thresher. Using a Graal on a humanoid target has predictably grisly effects. Its shots can be charged for more damage. The Liebershaft 2180 shotgun, or Eviscerator, is of human civilian design and has a unique ammunition generator. Where most modern firearms slice chips or pellets from an ammunition block, the M22 shaves off serrated metal wedges designed to fly aerodynamically. This dramatically improves its armour-piercing capabilities, and its tight grouping ensures lethality at longer ranges than standard shotguns. This design violates several intergalactic weapons treaties, so the M22 is not distributed to militaries. Bruised and Bloody Alliance Marines on Torfan attributed their survival against waves of Batarian mercenaries to the precision and stopping power of the Crusader. With a design patent on riot shotguns, this weapon has a moderate rate of fire that requires careful aiming. Since this accuracy requires little room for error, the Crusader is primarily used by highly trained soldiers. The Claymore used to be a hard-hitting but poor-selling shotgun due to kickback problems snapping the arms of anyone but Krogan firing the weapon. After a rehaul of its kinetic dampening system, the Claymore is being rolled out again. As a way to lure back customers, the gun's manufacturer has lowered the shotgun's selling price without skimping on its stopping power. 
The electrical weapon Riga Carbine improves upon the arc pistol's design by generating a sustained current on its target. The weapon is named for the Quarian Rigar family, whose marines have served valiantly against the Geth. The Venom shotgun was developed by the Solarian Special Tasks Group to meet the unpredictable needs of those stationed in hostile areas. The double barrel fires ammunition that detonates on impact, while a third barrel below can be charged to fire a round of micro grenades. Given the covert nature of most STG assignments, the Venom was designed to force an exit strategy and was issued to teams whose primary objective was to extract compromised undercover operatives. The shotgun is now issued to frontline soldiers in the war against the Reapers. The N7 Piranha is an assault shotgun designed for the Reaper War. When the N7 program began training alien resistance forces, the lighter-bodied species wanted a low-recall weapon with a wide pellet spread for dealing with hordes of husks. The result was the Piranha, which hit a sweet spot in close-range firepower. His rapid-fire capability tears apart not only husks, but most opponents unlucky enough to be in its way. Originally handcrafted for the exclusive use of Justicars, the Disciple shotgun schematics were finally released to Asari Commandos after centuries of negotiation. The Disciple uses shells packed with micro-scale sub-munitions to deal staggering amounts of damage. Even shielded enemies are stunned by the force of a blast from this weapon. The three-barreled Geth Plasma shotgun fires miniature but potent cluster rounds of superconducting projectiles and has a longer range than standard shotguns. The two-stage trigger system allows for either quick-fire capacitors or a charge and release attack to electrify the projectiles as they exit the weapon. As the rounds hit the target, they fragment and electricity arcs between the pieces, flash converting the air to conductive plasma. The resulting impact, heat and electrical charge overloads shields and barriers and causes massive trauma to unarmored targets. The M11 Wraith is favoured amongst mercenaries, pirates and slavers in the Terminus systems. Its high impact damage and sturdy construction make it a popular quick-draw shotgun. A variant of the M22 Eviscerator, demand for the Wraith is higher than ever, even though the weapon is banned in Citadel space. In order to lighten its weight, the Wraith holds fewer shots than the Eviscerator. The M5 Phalanx is the product of the Alliance's offensive handgun project, a close-in weapon to be used with no loss of stopping power in comparison with a soldier's assault rifle. The Phalanx enjoys a ballistics advantage over most heavy pistols. Civilian variants are often purchased by colonists on planets that have particularly dangerous big game animals. The Talon is a close-range pistol favoured by Cerberus Guardians. Firing heavy gauge shotgun pellets, it delivers massive trauma to unarmoured targets. Its waste heat is sufficiently excessive that it carries six separate ammunition blocks, rotating like a 20th century revolver to prevent shaver jam or misfire due to premature melting of the shot. Originally issued to the Solarian STG to allow small units to contain much larger enemy forces, the Scorpion pistol now sees service galaxy-wide. It fires low-velocity, squash-head projectiles with a dual use. The high explosive filler within the projectiles contains an adhesive that secures the projectile to the target on impact. When fired into a surface, it turns into a proximity mine. A reliable, accurate sidearm. Manufactured by Alanus Risk Control, the Predator is valued as a powerful, deadly and relatively inexpensive weapon. While it is not generally deployed in the military, it's still very popular in the Terminus systems. When the Alliance's offensive handgun project received funding to update one of its designs, its engineers chose to redesign the already impressive Phalanx pistol. Like its predecessor, the Eagle is a compact, fully automatic pistol that delivers unprecedented accuracy and punch with a rapid firing rate. The Eagle is named after the Desert Eagle, a classic handgun which gains a romantic reputation among gun collectors, thanks to its popularity in 20th and 21st century Earth action movies. Invented by Blood Pack weapons experts, the first execution was improvised using sparse parts and scrap metal during an Omega territory dispute. The result was a handheld cannon able to fire high impact armor piercing slugs, although only one at a time due to its limited heatsink. Many Blood Pack mercs carry an executioner as a backup in case they get pinned down, but some enthusiasts prefer it as their primary gun, sticking to the one shot, one kill approach. Designed for the Asari resistance, the Acolyte Sparrows fire advanced ammunition similar to that of an impact-triggered resonant warp bomb, which has a devastating effect on shields and biotic barriers. 
The specialised nature of the warp field means it does not pierce armour as effectively, but the shooter's biotics are expected to make up for this shortcoming. The M11 Suppressor is the product of the Alliance's offensive handgun projects that developed an infiltration weapon to be used in close quarter situations where silence is key. The Suppressor features a built-in integral sound moderator that reduces noise and muzzle flash. Civilian variants of the weapon are considered illegal, but can be found in some sectors. An innovation of Admiral Darrow Zen, the arc pistol is a scaled-down arc projector that only requires thermal clips to solve its power problems. The arc pistol uses a non-visible laser to ionise the air and create a path for high ampere electric shock. For a more damaging blast it can be charged up. A highly accurate and lethal pistol, the Carnifex is a favoured sidearm of mercenary leaders and Eclipse mercenary tech specialists. An expensive but powerful weapon, its marketing materials feature a charging Krogan with the slogan Don't you wish Carnifex was at your side? The Paladin is a reliable, durable weapon, developed by law enforcement looking for a high-powered but easily concealed sidearm for undercover agents. Surprisingly small for its hitting power, the Paladin is a variant on the Carnifex pistol. While it has a smaller clip than the Carnifex, its shots are unquestionably more powerful. The Sniper Rifle Concentration Mod uses biometric sensors and auto-targeting software to adjust to the user's pulse and breath rate, assisting aim. Spare Thermal Clip adds sockets to increase thermal clip capacity, increasing the number of spare shots. An extended barrel lengthens the barrel, creating greater bullet velocity and impact. A piercing mod uses a capacitor to boost kinetic coil generators and increase shot penetration. The Sniper Rifle Enhanced Scope is a stability enhancing scope. It increases accuracy while moving and taking damage. It highlights targets through smoke. The Ultralight Materials upgrade uses superior lightweight alloys to replace weapon parts, making the weapon less obtrusive and easier to handle. The Thermal Scope reveals enemies through walls and smoke with a 4x optical scope and enhanced stability and accuracy while zoomed. The High Velocity Barrel uses superior kinetic coils to increase shot penetration. The Assault Rifle Stability Damper distributes recoil with a sliding system of counterweights compatible with kinetic coil generators. It reduces weapon kickback. The Assault Rifle Magazine upgrade increases magazine capacity, allowing more shots before reload. The Assault Rifle Precision Scope is a simple 4x optical scope to enhance stability while zoomed. It increases accuracy while moving and taking damage. The Assault Rifle Omniblade attaches an Omniblade to the weapon for increased melee damage. The SMG High Calibre Barrel allows wider projectiles, causing more trauma on impact. It's ballistically optimised to retain penetrative power. The SMG Heatsink increases the conductivity of the thermal clip receiver. It negates heat generated by some shots. The SMG Power Magnifier is designed to enhance the effectiveness of tech or biotic attacks. The SMG Recoil System increases the weapon's mass for a split second after a shot. It uses an expert timing VI to do this to reduce weapon kick and improve aim. The shotgun blade attachment uses a tungsten carbide bayonet with a recessed edge for increased melee damage. The shotgun smart choke uses servo motors hooked up to an adjustable system which tightens or loosens the pellet spread for maximum accuracy. The pistol melee stunner is a small attachment to the muzzle of a pistol. It causes massive damage to melee targets. The Pistol Heavy Barrel is a pistol barrel that produces and withstands extreme kinetic and thermal energy. The Pistol Cranial Trauma System increases headshot lethality by balancing barrel calibration so that ammunition pierces bone and explodes in soft tissue. The Defender Armour is a variation on the N7 Special Forces combat gear, built to protect soldiers in long running engagements where reinforcements may be sparse. When the wearer fires a weapon, the suit's computers divert energy from the main power cell to the gun's kinetic coils, offering an extra punch. The Defender's storage compartments are designed to hold spare thermal clips, while capacitors throughout the armour provide extra power to shields during critical moments in battle. The armour also comes with an injection system built into the suit and neural-linked biomonitors that adjust the wearer's breathing rate and adrenaline levels. The Reckoner Knight armour was originally worn by the winners of Earth's Urban Combat Championship 2186, the Rhode Island Knights. A military-grade version of this equipment was presented to long-time Knights fans at the Alliance's Rhode Island base. 
in thanks for their passionate and vocal support during the EUCC Championship matches. Beneath this armour's medieval gothic facade lie a host of biofeedback systems intended to monitor the wearer's health and combat performance. Micro servos maximise damage done in close quarters combat, while a beefed up power cell feeds energy into weapon systems to increase projectile velocity. The fitting gear, originally designed for a full contact sport, sophisticated shield system also offers the wearer solid protection from incoming attacks. Among Cerberus soldiers, Ajax armour is favoured by those brave or unlucky enough to lead charges to break enemy formations. Its role is to keep the wearer standing and shooting as long as possible. It offers some benefit to Omnitool and Biotic Amp systems, but its main emphasis is boosting and recharging its kinetic barrier and bleeding off weapon heat through coolant circulation in its gloves. Due to the high-risk tactics associated with the armour, the Alliance has captured very few suits in perfect condition. Originally created for Earth's Urban Combat Championship League, the Blood Dragon armour has undergone as much or more field testing than those of modern militaries. It uses a unique, proprietary power cell that costs as much as an EECC rookie's contract. The armor's microframe computer adapts to any top-tier Omnitool, Kinetic Barrier or Biotic Amp, giving breathtaking and error-free performance. The chest and shoulder piece bears the logo of the Edmonton Blood Dragons, and the inside of the armor bears the signatures of the entire team. Cerberus Assault Armour is designed for shock troops, who are expected to turn the tide of battle against creatures or forces that would decimate normal soldiers. The troops demanded three things in its design. Shields and armour thick enough to last against a superior foe, and compartments for extra thermal clips. The only drawback of the armour is its weight, which the troops carry as a point of pride. They have a saying, out of shape going in, in shape coming out. The collector's chitinous armour is flexible and even tougher than ballistic fibres. Its organic construction allows it to be self-healing, and the muscle-like tissue that assists movement ensures it is comfortable to wear despite its weight. This suit was originally adapted out of salvage collector technology by Cerberus, and is incredibly difficult to find on the galactic market. Built specifically for Cerberus field officers, the Inferno armour has a VI dedicated to recognising signs of stress and medical trauma. This application helps assess soldiers, but can be useful in any high-risk situation. The Inferno's microframe computer also manages Bartic Amp and Omnitool power, and microservos help the wearer's movements to counteract the armor's weight. Terminus armor is environmentally sealed with an independent air supply for use in space and extreme planetary conditions. Its onboard microframe computer runs a suite of battle management software. To prevent detection by passive thermal sensors, body heat is channeled to the base of the feet and dispersed into the ground. The N7 helmet has a dual layer of fabric armour and kinetic padding within a lightweight ablative ceramic shell. As standard, it comes with a suite of communication, navigation and battlefield awareness software. The N7 breather helmet is hard sealed to protect the wearer from hazardous environmental conditions in addition to the usual benefits of an N7 helmet. Developed by the Tyrael Advanced Communications Corporation, TACC, the latest version of the Death Mask offers exceptional protection and real-time data feedback that helps coordinate the wearer's melee attacks. The Sentry Interface Visor works with the Sentry System, a software application that optimises an armour suit's microframe computer. When the Sentry System is running, more power can be devoted to shield management. A recon hood is issued to covert action teams. This model's optic display interfaces with most small arms auto-targeting software, linking hand and eye for improved accuracy and increased weapon damage. Ballistic mesh fabric and composite ceramic plating provide necessary armour, and the integral air filter helps in hostile environments. Relatively new to the market, the mnemonic visor is difficult to find outside of Alliance space. This headpiece plugs into the rest of the user's suit, gathering data so it can adapt to the wearer's tactics. It boosts armour performance at critical moments to allow a soldier to perform with greater strength and speed than normally possible. The Securitel helmet was originally designed as riot gear. It is covered in ablated plating, well padded to lessen damage from shocks, blows and bullet impacts. The helmet's emitters boost shielding in the rest of the armour, while its onboard computers monitor the wearer's heart rate and central nervous system. 
Developed by Ariake Technologies, the Kawashi visor exchanges full protective coverage for visibility, unencumbered mobility and increased accuracy. A next generation night vision device that assists targeting, the Umbra visor detects the focal point of the wearer's eyes and enhances the image at that location. The visor helps direct a biotic power or a shot from an Omni tool exactly where the wearer is looking. Developed by Delumcore Systems, a VI inside the Delumcore overlay enhances aim when targeting an enemy's vulnerable points. It also maximizes armor cell efficiency, feeding excess power to weapon systems. The overlay's VI originally reported the wearer's combat statuses out loud, but this system was scrapped after testers called it intrusive, talky, and kind of moody. The N7 breastplate is interlocking plates of thick ablative ceramic plates designed to be light, effective and easily repaired. The Casa fabrication chest plate has microcapacitors that release energy to speed up shield regeneration. The Ceres Council chest plate contains auxiliary power cells that augment combat performance. The Hane Kida chest plate feeds excess suit power to wearer's weapons. The Rosenkopf materials chest plate is sturdy armor that gathers real-time battle telemetry. The N7 pauldrons are a curved shell of ablative ceramic over kinetic padding. The Armax Arsenal shoulder plating with VI aim enhancement that targets enemy vulnerabilities. The Ariake technology shoulder plating has micro servos that coordinate melee strikes. The N7 gauntlets are a combination of fabric armor, kinetic padding and plates of ablative ceramic for protection. The Rosenkopf material gauntlets are made up of plating with microcomputers feeding into main armour telemetry systems. Armax Arsenal sell arm plating with VI aim enhancement that targets enemy vulnerabilities. Ariake Technologies gauntlets have micro servos that coordinate melee attacks. The N7 greaves have fabric armour, kinetic padding, thick plates of ablative ceramic and aligned with additional kinetic barrier emitters. The Armax Arsenal leg armour has storage compartments to hold extra thermal clips. The Hane Kida leg plating has auxiliary power cells that feed into weapons. Cerberus Shade armour is worn by phantoms who need to be prepared for a wide variety of threats. Its capacitors give modest boosts to shields and shield regeneration time. Many small improvements increase the performance of biotic amps and omni tools, heat management and kinetic coils for ranged weapons, and synthetic muscle assisters for melee capability. Cerberus Nightmare Armour is worn by Cerberus Phantoms expecting long-range conflicts. Powerful capacitors deliver punishing energy to the Phantom's weapons, and circulating coolant in its gloves allows for more shots before a given thermal clip overheats. The remaining energy focuses on shield strength and regeneration time to help survivability. Spirit Armour is worn by Cerberus Phantoms fortunate enough to be biotic, or for those who are skilled enough to use highly technical attacks. The armour has small gains for shield strength and regeneration, but where it truly shines is in its capacity to amplify biotic amps and omni tools. These attacks hit significantly harder and more often, allowing the Phantom to dismantle heavily armoured targets, 